Hi, I'm Nate with Average Jack Archery Pro Shop and Range here in Phillipsburg, PA. And today we're gonna to talk about how to shoot a thumb button in three different ways. So before we dive into the different ways you can fire a thumb button or a thumb barreled release, whatever you want to call it, I know it's on a button, it technically is a trigger. Before we actually uh, talk about the firing methods, I want to talk about the different types of releases that are out there, not necessarily on their ergonomics, how they fit in your hand, three finger, four finger, that type of thing, but actually how the jaws work and how their action and their firing mechanisms work. So the first one is one I don't actually have represented, and that's like the True Fire series, uh, which is a dual caliper series, and it has a swivel head. I think Trueball makes one as well. Both those styles are more on the inexpensive side and they're much more similar to you know your caliper style releases and how they function. You open up the jaw by activating the release and then you click it over top of the loop just like you would with your standard index style release. Now this is a Hot Shot Haze. Uh, the Hot Shot Vapor is another style release that also works in what I like to call a single action. The single action meaning it's just open close. It's just one action. That's all it does. Single action is kind of the terminology I use for it. We'll get to double actions later on down in this video. But single action style releases. Now the difference between that true ball and true fire with that opening head there uh, is that most of them are on a swivel. So the stem actually swivels, which so you would see a lot of guys would actually then come to full draw and then they place their hand totally parallel to the side of their face. We'll talk about this later and how I do not recommend it at all. Uh, but then you have the fixed single actions like this hot shot haze. So this haze here is just one action where you are opening and closing it with just one hand and then of course a lot of them are involved with just only having a trigger travel so when it comes to setting any style release most of the cheaper least expensive ones only have trigger travel which is the amount of time this release goes from close to open and vice versa the cheaper end releases, because of that, they're also usually on a roller sear. They're not on what I can call a hot sear or a two-piece sear system. And so you can have a decent amount of travel before that release goes off. Doesn't mean it's not smooth. Doesn't mean it's not a good surprise release. And in fact, the uh, little brother to the haze, the Vapor, is the one that I shot all indoor season this past year and did very well down at the Lancaster Archery Classic. Made it to the round of 16 in the bow hunter division, shooting a single action $120 odd thumb button. So it's not like you need an expensive thumb button to be very accurate and to be very consistent. But single actions are probably your uh, best entry model, if you will, because all you have to do is click it onto the D-loop and then you're ready to fire. You don't have to fuss around with a double action or a two-stage release, something like this Hot Shot Hookup. Now, the Hookup is my preferred release, actually. Uh, this is actually my buddy's release because all my stuff's at the shop, oddly enough. Uh, but this is the exact style that I like to shoot. A two-stage uh, two or two-sear release is going to have in the back somewhere, uh, it's going to have where you set the sear. So right now you notice that the hook is not closed. And so this is true if, if you shoot a scan or you shoot a scot, although a lot of the even more expensive ones, they will set like the um, Scott Apex, I believe. It has a spring-loaded jaw, so it's always closed and you're just setting the sear in the back. But since that is now set, I just take my finger and I close the jaw like that. I'm ready to hook it onto my D-loop and I'm ready to shoot. Because of the nature of the two sear system, even though it is that extra step, you do get the ability to adjust both tension, which is the amount of tension on the spring as you move the thumb barrel, and also the time of travel. So instead of just having the uh, time of tension or the, the amount of tension, which is what you get in the single stage releases, a two stage release will let you adjust both tension and travel. So if you like your, uh, your travel to be very short, but you like to have a lot of squeeze onto the trigger, you can allow that to happen. If you want to have a really long pull, but it's a really light one, you can have that happen as well. A release like this is usually going to ballpark at least 175 and up. Uh, the hookup itself is just south of 200 bucks. I think at 195 MSRP. Now, my personal preference, having shot both, uh, both open hook two-stager like this and a single stage in the haze or the vapor. I personally don't really have one against the other because I can use them both pretty easily. What I don't like using is a closed jaw two-stage. A closed jaw two-stage is something like the, uh, let's see, the Scott Pursuit, which isn't that all that expensive. A lot of your stands that don't have keepers, uh, the B3 exit release is the closed jaw system that is a two-stage. And that means that when you set this, you have to make sure this is set through the D-loop 
and then you close it inside the D-loop. So it's a lot of fussing around when you're in the tree. On the 3D course or on the indoor shooting lane, you're not gonna notice it because you have all the time in the world. It's a very relaxed situation. In the woods, I would not recommend, at least for me, I would not recommend shooting a two-stage style release that has a closed jaw. You wanna shoot an open hook or you wanna shoot a single stage that allows you just to open and close real quick, get on that D-loop and execute a shot on an animal, I think that's worth it. So let's talk about the three different ways you can actually fire one of these releases. So there is the hinge style method, which we'll pull out a hinge and talk about that in a second. Then you have just activating the button, and then you have activating what I like to call a gross motor skill or a whole hand action. I'll go through that one first as it is my preferred method. So I'm gonna hook this one uh, to the D loop here. I'm gonna slowly talk my way through and execute a shot. So I have a target just a few feet here, so we're not working for accuracy. When again, when I talk about that whole hand against the side of the face, right? So a lot of guys they'll they'll torque this completely parallel to the side of the face. That's bad news. You're importing you're uh, imparting a lot of torque onto the D loop and a lot of torque into your hand. You really don't want that. You really would realistically like this to be around a 45 degree angle to your chin. Now I like to anchor corner of my mouth here. And you see how that back hand, that back side of my hand there is going around the where my jaw makes the turn. That's why I tell a lot of people that come into my shop, they want to try a handheld style release, put that initial part of the webbing, that via your hand, right where your jaw makes the corner. So let's do that again. So this is true of any thumb button, regardless of how you're going to activate it. So my jaw makes the corner, corner of my mouth. Some people are able to get the nose to the string. I can't. And now I'm going to make it a gross motor skill, which means I'm going to come away from anchor so I can talk, which means that I'm going to activate my whole hand. I'm going to be squeezing. I'm going to activate my pinky, activate my ring, my middle, and my thumb. I'm going to make a fist. I'm going to keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. Okay. I am activating the whole hand. It is a gross motor skill. So what that allows me to do is focus my fine motor skills of aiming out front. So let me grab another arrow and talk about this a little bit further. I think this is really misconstrued when people think, oh, you have to shoot with back tension. And I don't think that is, I don't think that could be further from the truth. You have to squeeze it. No matter what, you, this, that has to be squeezed at some point. Now some people say, oh, you can roll your hand. And this isn't a hinge. This is a thumb button. You have to shoot it like you're activating a trigger, just like you would in a pistol and just like you would on an index style release. You have to activate that thumb barrel somehow. So you can, if you want, just activate with just the barrel. And you can just you leave your, I can leave my pinky relaxed and I can just move my thumb, move my thumb, move my thumb. But you'll see, you probably can see there, my pinky still wants to come in because I'm so used to making it a gross motor skill. When we, it, when we just work with one finger, this is in particularly true of index style releases, but when we just work with one finger, our brain will tell us to punch it. We'll tend to flick, we'll tend to move it because it's a fine motor skill. And our bodies are used to doing fine motor skills with our fingers all day. Typing, uh, using our phones, you know, writing with a pencil, all sorts of stuff, flipping through the pages of a book. It's fine motor skills all day. And your brain is used to doing this very quickly. We don't want this to go quickly. We want this to be very controlled. So when I go and go ahead and grab a release, I never just want to activate one finger. I want to activate the whole hand and make all the muscles in my forearm work together as they activate the tendons of my entire hand. So I'm going to do this again as I prefer to do it. So here I am very relaxed, but then as I get onto the thumb barrel, I'm going to start squeezing and squeezing, even my middle finger squeezing more, my ring finger squeezing more, and the shot goes off. And it's much more surprising because I'm making a whole fist. And that allows me then to focus on the fine motor of pin float up front. My shoulder is locked into a really good spot and I have a lot of back tension. Don't get me wrong, I'm still pulling. You can probably see that my elbow is still flying back as the shot occurs. My hand is not just stagnant. So I still have a lot of good tension, but I'm then adding more tension like I'm gripping a rubber band and I'm pulling the whole thing together, not just activating with the thumb. So let's talk about the hinge way, which I think is really, really difficult. So let's talk about the hinge method, which I personally think is the worst way to shoot a thumb button. I don't think it's consistent. I think the people that'll tell you that they can shoot it that way, they just that's just how their brain is wired. I think for most archers, making it a gross motor movement as a whole hand and feeling there's a string attached to your elbow, that's what I'll tell people in my shop, there's a string attached to your elbow that's pulling you backwards uh, towards the back wall of the range. That's, I think, a better way to start out with consistency. If you wanna play around with it later, feel free to do so. 
so. This is a hinge style release. If you've never seen one before, you notice there's no trigger. There's no, this is just a thumb peg here. The head is all on a pivot system. So it hinges around itself. And so I'll just kind of, I'll take this arrow off here real quick. The whole system is applied on a hinge and a lot of them have clicked. So I'm gonna hook this into the D loop here. And as this head comes around, there's the click, you might've been able to hear it. That's all it is, it's a literal rotation. So you can see where this is going with the thumb button, right? Instead of you activating your thumb, you're instead going to keep your thumb still and pivot the rest of your hand into the thumb barrel to allow the release to go off. Now this works okay if you're going to shoot a hinge, uh, which I haven't shot a hinge forever, so let's see how this activates here. <laughs> let's see if I can even uh, do this without punching myself in the mouth. Ooh, that was a little bit freaky, but now at this point, my thumb and index finger are the ones that are holding all of the tension, and now my ring finger comes around, click, and I just pull through in the round on the backside. That's all well and good for this style of release, in my opinion, because with this style of release, the fulcrum is up here. This is where the fulcrum of the release is. Your fulcrum is not at the thumb. Okay, the head pivots here, up where the actual shank of the head actually goes. When you're trying to activate a thumb button, this is not the fulcrum, it's not down here, it's up here, it's where the head is. This is the pivot point, it's up top. So trying to say you're gonna pivot around and get into your thumb is like trying to say that you're gonna go around on the Ferris wheel to go faster, it's not. It's such a big arc, it has no intentions of going quickly. So you can feel like you're just sitting there and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and you're just not getting anywhere, duh. It's because all the radius on the inside, around by the head, is moving the furthest, but then out here it's just going very, very slowly and you just can't seem to get that release to fire so let's see if I can demonstrate that here I'm gonna deliberately over exaggerate this here I'm gonna really torque it here so you can definitely see it again if the, if this is the pivot right my thumb stays still when I go to pivot my thumb has to move because it's attached to my hand right with a hinge the thumb doesn't have to move because the pivot point is up here okay but since I'm pivoting with the rest of my fingers and the thumb or the uh, the head of the release is fixed my thumb is still moving and you can feel like you're rotating and pulling and rotating and pulling until the cows come home and you can't get the release to go off so even under tension here let's see if we can do this even under tension here i'm gonna try to keep my thumb fixed and i'm just gonna try to like rotate 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 oh man <laughs> like, that. like i'm cranking into that don't get me wrong it will work but from the physics standpoint of how, of how a release activates, this does not activate like a hinge release. Your trigger is out here on the outside of the Ferris wheel, right? As it takes a big long arc for it to go from point A to point B. The inside of the Ferris wheel or the inside part of the hinge does not have to go very far. You can't really see when I'm firing that hinge release my actual movement of how I'm actually going because it does not take that much travel. On a thumb button though, you can probably see the amount of movement that I need to get this release to fire. So here I am, I'm gonna fix my thumb, I'm just gonna keep rotating into it, rotating into it, rotating into it, rotating into it, and there it eventually goes off. But one thing I don't feel like, and granted, I don't shoot this way, but one thing I don't feel like is I have a whole lot of control over that. Because in the event that I have to stop, for example, on a hinge I know where there's a click. Right? Some guys don't shoot with a click, but on a hinge there's a click. And I know, okay, there's my click. I now have a little bit more pull until this release fires. With this, there is no click. So how much did I pull this time versus how much did I pull last time versus how much rotation did I do here? Did I start the rotation too quickly? Did I start the rotation too late? I have no idea where I am. Well, what if you need to execute a shot quickly? The shot's running out on the timer. You know, <laughs> that happened to me at Lancaster this past year. Ran out of time on, a, on an end. Didn't get a final arrow call. Um, or, you know, the whitetail steps out from behind the tree and you need to go full send. Would you rather trust a whole hand squeeze that goes quite quickly, or at least goes faster, or you're gonna rotate? Where did you start rotating? Did you start rotating before you walked behind the tree, and now when it comes out behind the tree, you continue to rotate, and then you hit the tree, or you send it over his back? Like, I just don't trust the hinge-style method of shooting with a thumb button. The physics just aren't there. I strongly prefer the whole hand gross motor. You still, if you really wanna try the hinge and back tension, you have at it, although it's not my preferred method by a country mile. 
So we've covered using the whole hand as a gross motor skill. We've covered using it like a hinge style where you're trying to pivot around the thumb button. But then the final piece is just using it like an index style release where you are just activating the thumb barrel itself. Now this lends to what we would commonly call punching, right? It's where we feel like we're there and then we just, we just go for it, right? And that's very common with index style shooters. However, if you follow any of the ASA tournaments or the IBO shooters, there's a lot of people, very successful shooters, Kyle Douglas, uh, Tim Gillingham come to mind that are command shooters, which is the polite way of saying they punch the trigger. Meaning that when they want the shot to go off, they execute that shot immediately. There's no following through in terms of how they're squeezing. It's just we send, but then they have proper follow through. You'll never see a situation where any command shooter of that style, a puncher if you will, is going to not have follow through. So here's where I mean with not having follow through. So if you're gonna go and go ahead and punch the trigger. You're just gonna come to anchor and you're just gonna send it right there. You notice how my hand is like right here still. It's like right next to my face still. That's because I'm not having proper follow through. And this is very common, and particularly with beginner archers who don't understand the activation of their back muscle. Your back muscle is the strongest muscle in this whole system, all right? It's definitely not your thumb. So what you want it to be is the strongest muscle to be working the hardest, and your weakest muscle, your thumb, to be working the least amount in order to activate the trigger. So that means I can punch this trigger. I can come back here, I can get the full draw, I can come to anchor, but I've activated my back muscle. And now at this point, if I punch the trigger, if I really want to send it, it goes back. It flies straight back. It's that string onto the elbow. Now, I think this is a great way to start target panic <laughs> if you're really interested in trying something like that. But if you're going to be a puncher, if you're gonna be a command shooter, you want that pin to settle real quick, and poo, you wanna send it, the number one thing I have to recommend is that you have a very deep grip. I would not recommend, if you watch my thumb being out here on the tip, I would not recommend floating and then just slap it into it. Get very deep on the barrel, really far in. So that way when you're ready to go and you're ready to send it, you can, but it doesn't have to go very far. The people that punch the trigger or command shooter that have a long travel. So again, this comes down to your release. I like to see a 2C release for people who want to shoot this way. They have a long travel. It means you got to punch it for a long distance, which means you got every opportunity to flinch, change your form, fall out of your peep. Your accuracy is going to be all over the place. What you want is if you want it to be hard on tension, that's fine, but do not have a long travel. If you have a long travel, you're going to see groups that are terrible. I almost guarantee it. And you're not going to have the consistency that you want. So this release here actually, even though it's not my personal release, is actually set with a pretty medium travel. So it actually would be halfway decent if I wanted to shoot it as a command shooter. So it actually isn't too bad. So I come in here deep, I'm ready, I'm ready, pin settles, pin settles, there I go. And it's a deliberate action. I have to consciously think about it. Elbow back this way, bow going forward. If I don't think about it, I'm just gonna stay right here and it's not gonna be a consistent way to shoot and I'm not gonna have the accuracy or the results that I want. Well, I've prattled on long enough on this topic. If you have any questions on how to shoot a thumb button or any other style of release that's out there on the market, feel free to drop a comment down here on YouTube. You can always find us on Facebook and Instagram, Average Jack Archery. You can even send me an email at averagejackarchery at gmail.com. If you want to call Average Jack Archery Pro Shop and Range, your local home shop, we're located in Phillipsburg, PA, and you're welcome to come down and check out the store. We'd be happy to have you call our shop your home shop. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.